Good morning. In this video, I'll speak about adversarial attacks by cyber fires and electronic fires. I'll try and make this video as simple as I can. This is my fourth video in the series of eight videos that I shall be doing uh, on the eight lessons learned from the ongoing Ukraine war. Now, if we look at the Ukraine campaign, at the beginning of it, the Russian military was able to close down the internet services of, of the uh, Ukrainian military. This was possible because of their cyber fires or cyber attack capabilities. Thereafter, the backbone of connectivity for the Ukrainian military right from their front line to the depth has been Starlink. Now the problem with Starlink is that the Starlink electronic signals they are getting jammed by the Russian military, the electronic fires or electronic warfare. So there are three observations I want to make on the use of cyber fires and the use of electronic fires in the Ukraine theater. Number one, both these non-kinetic capabilities, they complement one another. I will explain this in a little while how they do, but they work in tandem. Second observation is, that because these capabilities, non-kinetic capabilities, they travel at the speed of light. So the preferred strategy for any country has to be attack, attack and more attacks in these areas. You cannot create what the Indian military has done, a defense cyber agency with all defensive things, it's meaningless. And my third observation is that if we are not seeing some shock and awe because of these two non-kinetic capabilities in the theater there. It is because of the complexion of war. There's a proxy war going on between two major powers, uh, US-led NATO on one side and the Russian on the other side. But if the same capabilities will be brought into our theater, they will create shock and awe and I will explain how. First of all, in our theatre, we are looking at our main adversary, our enemy is the PLA. Now, PLA is a major power. Indian military is a minor power, is a medium, let's, sorry, medium power. The gap between the two in terms of technology and war concept is 30 years. Now, I will not go in the detail of those 30 years. Uh, how the Indian military was, you know, lagged behind because I have explained this in my earlier video in some details. So here I will say is that the strategy that the PLA will follow against the Indian military, the absolute winning strategy will be the systems destruction warfare or cognitive confrontation. How do you destroy the systems, the command systems means what? System is the networked elements as well as command and control centers. Because the whole idea will be to deny communications, deny information, thereby break the chain of command of the Indian military, create chaos in the combat zone. That will be the aim. So what is this systems destruction warfare? It has two elements. One is the kinetic fires and the second is the non-kinetic fires. I explained in my last video the kinetic fires where I spoke of their land-based missile in the rocket force organization. The other potent organization or a distinctive organization of the PLA, both these organizations, the rocket force and the other force which is the strategic support force organization, they were created specifically after the 2015 military reforms of the PLA for the systems destruction warfare. It is these two organizations which will do the entire or most of the work of destroying the systems. And both these, they, they support one another, the strategic support force and the rocket force, and they do not report to the theater commanders. They report directly to the Try service highest joint staff department which works under the CMC, the Central Military Commission. This is the importance of these two organizations. So kinetic fires and non-kinetic fires. Now in non-kinetic fires, which is the organization, the strategic support force, 
what they have brought in is cyber electronic warfare electromagnetic spectrum or electronic warfare i'll just explain the difference in the two and the space and counter space capabilities and the fourth thing is the information warfare which i am not discussing right now because i will include that i'll do a separate video on the information warfare now what is about these two let's start with that about the cyber wires cyber fires and the electronic fires how they are unique is because as far as the cyber is concerned first of all what is cyber cyber space is the space between computers and the internet and everything which is in between that means your processors your routers your uh, your wireless networks your uh, wired networks everything in between is uh, creates your cyber space that means once there is more and more digitization more and more networking you create more and more cyber space and it is in this cyber space that the viruses or the malware which is the malicious software which is your digital weapons digitized weapons software weapons they operate in this cyber space now so cyber space then becomes what is called the controlling domain why controlling because when you are doing operations on land on sea air or outer space the physical domains for physical domains you need information you need data now if they are infected by the viruses or the worms or the trojans then how do you get the data you don't get the data so it's a controlling domain those domains don't work simple now more than that the electromagnetic spectrum is what i call the foundational domain why foundational because it is the enabling domain no domain will work including cyber domain if you are weak or if a military is weak in the electromagnetic spectrum now what is about the electromagnetic spectrum and why we never heard about this years back or decades back in war fighting how has it become more important in modern warfare this is the question first of all what is electromagnetic spectrum so there's a chain reaction that goes on in the atmosphere there is a electric field and there is a magnetic field which alternates creates a chain reaction and because of that waves are created so there are waves constantly in the atmosphere and everything the humans do whatever we do we are using one or the other wave and waves are same they only differ in their wavelength and hence they have different characteristics for example the seven wavelengths are radio wave microwave infrared wave visible light which we use i mean you are watching youtube because of visible light ultraviolet waves x rays and gamma rays because of their distinctive characteristics they have a distinctive function in the military field for example most of the military communications they use the the radio waves radio frequencies they use then you have the the radars in the satellite using the microwaves then you have infrared used for intelligence purposes visible light and so on so when we now think like this you have these waves without which nothing will move and you have the cyber space it is the continuum of this cyber space and electromagnetic spectrum any military which does not have a capability to operate to contest combat confront in this continuum loses the war period why it loses the war is because information data is not available communications are shattered and in the case of indian military which i don't know if it is a plus or a minus point which is not even networked fully then the i said the other complementary organization the rocket force comes into being which i explained in my last video the land based missiles they will demolish the command and control centers the whole idea is to create chaos panic in the chain of command so this is the importance of this 
now the question is uh, how is it that it has become so important suddenly the electromagnetic spectrum because after all electronic fires electronic warfare has been a traditional thing in the indian military why it has become important is that first of all everything the job of the electromagnetic spectrum has become more difficult for the simple reason the electromagnetic spectrum today is contested congested and constrained between major powers which is what is happening in ukraine and the jobs that you do normally military jobs by using this spectrum is situation awareness is communication with your troops denying communications to the adversary identifying enemy's capabilities and navigation of your pgms your uh, guided bombs your missiles all this that means everything in the battle space is because of the electromagnetic spectrum now so while the electronic warfare was always there the key thing is that now there's a requirement for electromagnetic spectrum management and this is where the importance has come in that means because it has got congested with so many new things having come into the battle space alongside the demands rising on the commercial side for example smartphones for example 5g iot they'll all use some spectrum for their functioning so how do you manage that how in war you shift to places of the spectrum open new spaces in the spectrum identify quickly what the adversary is doing this has become a very big thing and this is where now we have to go beyond electronic warfare one thing i need to emphasize here why this which i should have done a little earlier why this continuum is important because the viruses attack in the cyber space they destroy the data or the information so the as far as the cyber is concerned it is working within the software networks as far as the electronic warfare is concerned it is attacking the waves which are carrying this data that means those software networks it is attacking them from outside so this is how they complement one another now going beyond the traditional electronic warfare this is where major militaries pla us military they are in the lead and even pakistan air force now has taken a lot of distinctive steps in this area this is working on cognitive electronic warfare the pakistan air force has been working on it for the last 2 years at least since 2020 2020 now what is cognitive electronic warfare this is the use of artificial intelligence and machine learning in electronic warfare how can you improve electronic warfare now this is certainly the most uh, i would say researched field today in the military domain and highly classified so what we know what people countries are working on is that there is a cat and mouse game going on between electronic warfare and sensors sensors have improved a lot sensors are so good today that autonomously they can detect and they can do jamming jamming of the radars that means a aircraft has come in a hostile area environment and the radar is there the sensor is able to do that the now you need the counter measure on the fly if the radar sensor has detected that and it has done this jamming then the aircraft should be able to do counter jamming on the fly that means the ew pod electronic warfare pods should have artificial intelligence where they adapt in real time in real time they are able to generate new techniques of counter measures how to do that and if they are unable to do that they store it in their library the electronic library that all right this was a certain thing which emanated 
from the uh, uh, from the hostile aircraft or the radars so this waveform has to be uh, understood and kept for the subsequent mission so all this has to happen in real time and quick there is no time like earlier electronic warfare used to function is that there is a hostile a wave which has not been understood you capture that wave bring it back analyze it and then you include that into your electronic order of battle so this is where the importance of electronic fires and the importance of electromagnetic spectrum management now let's see a bit on the cyber side what i said is about data now what has happened in cyber is things change grandly spectacularly after the 2009-2010 stuxnet attack done by the us and the israel on the iranian nuclear centrifuges how things changed was first of all that was the first digital weapon that the world had seen which was actually operationalized and that because of that digital weapon there was a convergence of the cyber and the physical domains that means a digital software weapon could actually destroy the 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 centrifuges of the iranian nuclear facility which is in the physical domain now again here also a lot of work is going on just as work is going on in electronic warfare how the artificial intelligence will impact this is it will impact it will make cyber attacks stealthier it will make them precise it will make them persistent and at a large scale in other words with the use of artificial intelligence in cyber attacks what we call the advanced persistent attacks we are looking at a campaign or a cyber war so what does it require the advanced persistent attacks two things one is a capability to make sophisticated digital software weapons which require your cyber nerds who can write complex algorithms you need fast processing capacities you need uh, computers which are uh, super computers and you need nanotechnology all these things china has we don't have indian military lacks this that means at a campaign level we will not be able to do anything now in any case what we have is a defense is a defense cyber agency which was raised in 2019 which is nothing more than a, a defensive organization looking at the defense and as i said in cyber it is all about attack you have to have a offensive stance nothing short of that now as far as this continuum is concerned what i spoke of the cyber and the electromagnetic spectrum if a virus is inserted in this then by electronic signals because after all there are satellites the virus can be conveyed or it can be passed on through those electronic signals and it can destroy even the electro optics and the synthetic aperture radars which are there on the satellites a huge damage can be done that means then these three things connect in any case the pla has today uh very massive capabilities counter space capabilities today they can not only jam the satellites they can destroy them with their missiles which is the asat capabilities and they can throw the satellites out of their orbits by robotic arms it is because of the chinese space and counter space capabilities that the us military created the space force and now in this budget they have they have been budgeted for or they have got the finances to create a virtual training ground for space conflict so now think about what all i have said these two organization the rocket force with the land based missile and the strategic support force with the cyber counter space and the electronic warfare capabilities when they work in tandem the communications will be destroyed the communication will be destroyed because if you are a medium power and do not have capabilities in this domain or they are very little they are defensive capabilities then you cannot expect the campaign to run for more than 72 hours 
and perhaps the war will be over in less than 10 days and this is precisely what I have discussed in my book The Last War. Now in my next video I will be talking about drones, drones in the Ukrainian theatre and how the drones, what sort of, what the drones will do in our template which is an entirely different theatre. Thank you.